South Sudan won independence from Sudan in 2011 after a long war. Um, it's since been ruled by the SPLM, which is the previous rebel movement. South Sudan's got a lot of oil reserves, it's rich in oil, and it's also received a lot of international assistance, but despite that, it remains an extremely fragile state with a number of significant problems. Among these, there was very, very low levels of human development, very widespread poverty, likewise deep ethnic tensions which have yet to be resolved. Um, high levels of corruption. Sudan has, South Sudan has extremely high levels of corruption across all state institutions and within politics. It's also awash with small arms and really security has been a challenge since it began. And in recent months there have been increasing accusations of authoritarianism by the government and particularly the president, Mr. Kier. Current violence is a result of a deep-rooted and historical split within the SPLM movement and particularly a power struggle between President Kiir and the ex-Vice President Macha who was sacked together with the rest of the cabinet last summer. Um, well, President Kiir accuses Macha of starting a coup. Um, Macha is accusing Kiir of increasingly repressive authoritarian behaviour, clamping down on dissent within the party. Um, what is clear is that while this has political roots, it's spilt over into ethnic violence. The fighting began between army factions, but since then we've seen widespread killings of civilians, we've seen human rights abuses, uh, mass atrocities, mostly with an ethnic character. The international community has been strongly engaged in South Sudan since its independence and has spoken out very, very critically, calling on both sides to immediately horse, halt all hostilities. Um, the UN has also sent almost doubled its troops, so they're taking the situation very seriously. But I think that any resolution of this situation will probably come from Sudan's neighbours. The East African community, the IGAD, has been um, spearheading some talks to try and at least get in place a ceasefire and the parties are currently meeting now in Ethiopia to see if that can be done. Likewise, Sudan has been playing a role in trying to help secure, help the South Sudan, Sudanese government secure some of the border areas which are very oil rich. An interesting element has been China. China's the biggest investor in South Sudan's oil, oil um, economy and China has come out very strongly calling on both sides to take part. It's sent an international envoy to speak to both parties and the foreign minister has spoken about this and suggested that he could be involved. So we see here really pressure from South Sudan's neighbours and South Sudan's investors. What's going to come out of these peace talks is still very unclear. They've only just begun and, and we don't really know where we're going with this. Certainly there have been noises from both sides saying that there's possibilities for reconciliation, possibilities for a cessation of hostilities, but really there's no concrete information coming out right now. What we do know is that even if there's a ceasefire, there's South Sudan will continue to face very serious problems. Firstly, there's a split, as I was saying, a deep split in the SPLM, and that needs to be resolved for the country to move forward politically. Likewise, the fact that there's been so much ethnic violence will have fueled mistrust between communities and created wounds that are going to be very hard to heal, and that will continue to be a source of tension and instability in South Sudan. What we see also is that President Kidd has been very adamant, saying he doesn't want to get involved in power sharing. Um, so it's unclear quite what he's going to offer Mr. Machar in the way of, of some kind of, of concessions or solution. And finally, we know that South Sudan is due for elections in 2015, and it's likely that political tensions and political violence would only rise in the run-up to those elections. So while we don't even know yet if we're able to see a ceasefire and an end to the current violence, certainly the road ahead looks very rocky. Thank you.